the skill of experimenting in the improvement card. Now, the reason this has come to the surface is that through application of the improvement card over the last few, few years, a number of us have come to the conclusion that not always, but quite often, we're making an assumption that when we uh, experiment, that the people we're working with, <clears throat> or the, the people the coaches are working with, um, in step four of the improvement carter, which is experimenting, there's an assumption there that the um, that the learners are competent in the skill of experimenting. Now we've found, not always, but I think we've found, or we feel that in a number of situations that assumption is flawed, and perhaps we need to focus a little bit more on the practical skill of experimenting in the fourth step of the improvement carter. So this 20-minute webinar is really just to lead into our a lead in with our thoughts into that. At the end of the, uh, the last slide, I'll give you a point of reference where you can learn a little bit more. And then we um, do have a, a workshop, a one-day um, uh, workshop that we run uh, that's, that's designed at helping build the practical skill of experimenting in the workplace. <clears throat> so let's get started. But let's set a bit of a foundation first. And that is, um, and I've done this, Some any of you have attended, other Toyota Carter webinars I've done or presentations. Uh, you might be familiar with these first couple of slides or the message of these first couple of slides. The first question, why bother? Why bother with Toyota Carter? The purpose of Toyota Carter and, and these patterns is to develop the skill of scientific thinking in our managers and in our um, employees. Scientific thinking is the mental, is cup, couple of definitions here. It's a mental framework for approaching goals and obstacles or problems. And it is a continuous comparison between what we predict will happen next, seeing what actually happens and adjusting our understanding and actions based on what we learn from any difference. But interestingly enough, I guess that begs a question. Why is it important that we think scientifically as we improve? Why is that, why was this not being discussed you know, 20 or 30 years ago to the extent that it is now. What's changed is, is the question there. So why scientific thinking? Is because right now we are less sure than ever of what the future looks like in the business world and overall. So looking at that picture underneath that statement, uh, we can see a bend about 20 metres away. Um, you know, I guess several years ago or many years ago, that bend was 30 or 40 metres away. Uh, we can't see what's around the corner. Now, in effect, that bend is getting closer and closer. We can't see all the, the, the time span forward with which we, in which we can't see around the corner is getting less and less and less. We are, we're not sure what the future looks like overall. Therefore, the most success will come to those who are best at adapting. So when you get to the corner and you get a sniff of what's around it, those who can adapt and continuously improve will, become the, will be the most successful. Now, um, when Mike Rother uh, wrote the book of Toyota Carter, that was a product of him, of him and his colleagues studying businesses that they believed had been most successful in adapting and continuously improving over the, you know, the years previous to that, previous to 2000. And one of them was, uh, or the one that they studied the most was uh, clearly Toyota. So they were the most successful in continuously improving and adapting, which was why he went to them and a number of their suppliers. So why scientific thinking? Because we are not sure, we are less and less and less sure of what the overall future looks like. Therefore, writing the plan is less effective. Therefore, we must become um, uh, successful at adapting. Scientific thinking will help us become uh, much more competent in and uh, capable of adapting quickly. So what is Toyota Carter? Uh, again, just setting some ground, uh, ground position here. Toyota Carter is two practice patterns. There is the improvement Carter and it's the coaching Carter. Uh, most of you watching, I'm sure, would be familiar with that. The improvement Carter is a practice pattern that will lead us towards systematic scientific way of thinking and acting. The coaching Carter is a practice pattern that will lead us towards managers being teachers of that way. So it's pretty important that we understand that concept is that the improvement card is a practice pattern leading to a systematic scientific way of thinking and acting. The coaching card is a practice pattern that will help us to develop, become teachers of that way. <clears throat> the 
The two kata is the visible stuff, what you'll see and hear very clearly to start with. Through practice, we will develop the less visible stuff. So uh, over time, if the visible stuff is done enough, if the practice is done enough, then we'll develop this less visible stuff, the systematic scientific way of thinking and acting and managers of teachers that way. That is what Toyota Carter is about. It's about building a, 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 um, a practice platform, if you like. Our focus today is going now uh, is going to be on the improvement Carter and experimenting, as I've said at the start. So very quickly, what's the improvement Carter? Uh, it's a four-step pattern that uh, where the first step is to get the direction or challenge, or this is where we set our goal, uh, aligned with the customer's needs. And we remember there that the customer may well be an internal customer. Then the second step of the improvement Carter, bottom left, is to grasp the current condition. This is not only data, not only charts and numbers, but also facts and observations. It's facts and observations that actually uh, uh, cause the data or give rise to the data, uh, if those facts and observations are not clear, then really you have, you've only got half the current condition if you've just got a set of data. Step three of the improvement Carter is to establish our next target condition, an interim point, uh, a condition uh, that we're going to aim for, for one part of the process, the way we want that process to be operating. Uh, that will give us an outcome that will be a step towards the challenge. And you can see from this diagram, there's multiple target conditions. Fourth step is to conduct experiments to get there, um, that being our focus today. So again, I'll say it again, it's a improvement card as a practice pattern to develop this less, this systematic scientific way of thinking and acting. It's a, so the improvement card is a means to an end. Uh, if you don't practice, you won't get to that end. Our focus today, as I've said, is conducting experiments to get there. So why is experimenting important in getting there? Let's be pretty clear on it. So we're not experimenting for the sake of it. There's a reason why we experiment in getting there. If you have a look at that diagram, which is the first part of the left-hand section, bottom left section of the improvement Carter diagram, it's actually an after diagram. In other words, this line that you see here is the path that was taken towards that next target condition that had a by when date. Experiments have been conducted to get there in this diagram and it shows the path, if you like, of the experimentation. So that is an after diagram. I think it's pretty important to look at the, the now diagram <clears throat> while, we're, while we're within that, um, while we're actually within our experimenting stage. So the now diagram shows um, our learner as taking a couple of steps forward, the in, um, on the on their side of the knowledge threshold, then they reach the knowledge threshold and they realise there's a grey zone there and that grey zone is um, where we have unpredictability and um, obstacles that are going to appear that we didn't expect. So how do we see further into that grey zone? Remember the torchlight um, uh, example that Mike uses frequently. How do we see further with the torchlight? We take a step forward. So how do we see further into our grey zone? We take a step forward. Uh, the key point here is that taking a step forward is not random. How do we take that step forward? We experiment. So we don't take a step forward randomly. We take a step forward via, uh, via an experiment. So the model for experimenting in the improvement Carter, you can see it um, expanded upon here. We've still got our goal to the top left, top right. We've got our grasp con current condition, bottom left. We've got our person who's taken a step forward and reached their knowledge threshold, our learner. So we have our target condition here, we've identified obstacles, and now we experiment uh, using PDCA, plan, do, check, act. So let's have a little bit closer look at what plan, do, check, act um, entails. And this is where we believe, and a number of people we work with believe there's, there's, uh, we're assuming there's good understanding and good capability. We're not so sure that assumption is correct. People talk a lot about PDCA. Um, we're, yeah, we're of the opinion that it's the understanding and the and the capability is um, is not as strong as uh, it might need to be, and it does and it, and if it's not, it does hold back <clears throat> the um, the value gained and the movement towards the target condition through experimenting. So let's have a look in detail at PDCA from a workplace perspective 
and conducting uh, workplace experiments. Firstly, we have plan, which is a before event. So before we do anything, we spend time planning. And I think a number of you might have seen this statement from Einstein, if I had only one hour to save the world, I would spend 55 minutes defining the problem and only five minutes finding the solution. Uh, that's uh, something I probably noted 15, 20 years ago, we didn't really understand it. <clears throat> Thought it made sense, but I guess I wasn't really clear on how to go about putting that into practice. Uh, my understanding is that it's something that the um, Japanese, for example, do particularly well. Uh, and, it, and when you think of PDCA and the planning phase of PDCA, it, it's where that fits in and makes a lot of sense. <clears throat> so essentially four points to be considered before we do anything in our planning phase. Firstly, what will be done? Next is what is predicted to happen? Then importantly and often sometimes missed, what will be measured and how? And then even more importantly and missed if bullet point three is missed, is what is predicted to be seen in the measurements. So four bullet points to be considered in the planning stage, a minimum four of foundational bullet points. What will be done? What are we going to do? What do we predict will happen? What will we measure? and how will we measure it? And what do we think will happen in terms of those measurements? Then we're into the now where we actually do four points, do exactly what was planned and don't do anything more. So often, uh, and we see it a lot in the work we do, and particularly in that simulation that we run, is that people get part way through and then they start adapting during the experiment. The problem with that is it, um, it may lead to a misdirection of, uh, oh, sorry, a, um, an Ill, uh, you aren't able to draw conclusions from your results <clears throat> because there's more than one thing being varied. So we do just what was planned, we don't do anything more. We make sure the measurement we plan to be capturing is being captured and we also note what is actually, uh, what, what's happening. So we do what was planned, we don't do anything more. We make sure uh, the measurement is being captured as was planned and we note what is happening um, as, we, as we do the do. So that's the now. Then we, uh, then we check afterwards. Um, so we did the plan before, we do is the now, the check is after. We review what happened. We ask what is the data showing, what is the data now showing? How do both of the above compare to what was predicted? And the reason we do those three, is so we can ask the most important question of the whole of the fourth step of the improvement carter, and that is what has been learnt. So we do those first three, because those three enable the most important question, the most valuable question within the organisation, within the, within the whole pattern of the improvement carter, and that is what has been learnt. Because what has been learnt is being pulled by our target condition. A target condition is where we need to be um, in one month's time or whatever it may be. So the, so what has been learned is so valuable to the organisation because, because it's actually a pull system for learning. The learning has been pulled by the target condition. It will be valuable. It's not push learning. So what has been learned is, is, um, is able to be effectively answered if those first three bullet points are done. Now, maybe this is my left brain, my left brain coming through that the, <laughs> the improvement Carter has uh, sort of forced me to let go of a little bit. Um, that's a whole other story, but I'll think of it like this. It's a little bit of an equation, is what actually happened minus what was predicted equals what has been learnt. So the, so the bigger the difference between happened and predicted, the greater the learning, and that is most valuable. And this is often something that uh, lear new learners will really struggle with, because what that indicates sometimes in new learners' eyes, is if there's a big difference, well then they didn't understand the situation or they didn't understand the problem. Uh, and that shows that that's a deficiency. Uh, it can be a major stumbling block that. And it's something, a message we need to get across is that, that that is actually, the bigger the difference between happened and predicted, therefore the bigger the learning, the more successful the experiment. Uh, and that's often a message that's missed. Um, when we see a big difference between when some people see a big difference between happening and predicted, then they feel that they uh, didn't understand the situation and that's a deficiency on their part. 
totally the opposite in um, workplace experimenting. Happened to minus predicted equals learnt. Uh, and the bigger the learning, the better. As long as, um, and this is slightly off topic, the experiment was conducted uh, within the box of risk and um, what we learned was not catastrophic. Uh, that's another topic in its own right. So the check is review what happened, what is the data showing, how do both compare to what was predicted? So we can ask the question, the most valuable one, uh, and get a, a valuable answer, what has been learned? Then, we move to act, and this is, uh, or I use, like to word the, use the word adjust, which is an after, after the do. Uh, just a comment on act and adjust. Um, I, I use adjust, adjust is far more meaningful to me, and really it was when I started to use the word adjust, probably 10 or 15 years ago, that I felt that I was starting to get my head around proper PDCA. The word act, in my mind, just means do something, uh, just, uh, without any particular direction, act to me is just do something. An adjustment to me, in my mind, means it's a smaller thing, it's a smaller thing and it's based on something. So to, to act is just to do something, to adjust is a smaller action, a smaller step if you like, based on something. And the something is based on what's just been learnt. And also note here that the little yellow box I've been putting up on the left-hand side previously was just around plan, then around do, then around check, and you may have been expecting it to be just around act, but you'll notice it's not. It actually moves into the planning stage as well, because remember, PDCA is a cycle. So when you're in the act or adjust, pardon me, the act or adjust stage, you are moving into planning. So the Bullet points for uh, just, given what has been learned, and you'll notice that's underlined uh, because that's the scientific part, we're connecting what's been learned to what we're gonna do next. And given what's been learned, what do you need to do now? And then, and given your direction, which we remember in the improvement carter is our target condition, what will you plan to do next? And what obstacles are still on your way? So in a, effectively in adjust, you sort of in that adjustment phase, you move into the planning phase during adjustment. It's really not um, adjust and plan. It's through adjusting, you will, you will move into the planning stage for the next cycle. So what will you plan what to do? Um, uh, what will you plan to do next and what obstacles are still in your way? Now in the improvement card, remember here, you, you may have reached your target condition. At this point, you may have reached it in other, and therefore what will you plan to do next is set the next target condition. So we all step out of our experimenting cycle and move into uh, establishing our next target condition before we start experimenting again. You may be at that point. You, you'll, you may be at the point where um, you remove the obstacle you're working on, but we still have obstacles in our way, in which case we pick the next one and start our planning or you may not have removed the obstacle that you were working on. Therefore, it's the same obstacle that's still in your way. So what we plan to do next will be based on that. So really in our adjustment and planning stage, there's three potential outcomes. Either we're going to be moving out of experimenting and setting our next target condition. We're going to be working on the next obstacle that's in our way, or we're going to be working on the same obstacle again remembering that it's always, a, either of those three, it's always going to be a cycle. Um, we're, we're following that PDCA pattern throughout. So that's really all I was going to cover in the summary, uh, sorry, of uh, the experimenting and particular focus on PDCA. If you want to learn more, we'd li I'd like you to go to our Toyota Carter Continuum. There's four steps to doing that. Go to our website with the addresses there, step one. Uh, step two is to click on the bottom left, learn more. And um, step three is to, you, when you click on the bottom left, learn more, you'll see this continuum come up. Click on circle number three, you can see where the mouse is. And then go to the second item down, which is conducting workplace experiments. And you can download that article, all the PDFs that are on our website and no more than 600 words. Uh, two pages, 600 words, so it's not a lengthy article. Just goes into a little bit more detail than I've discussed here, and also gives you um, an outline of the workshop I was talking about. 
And lastly, if you have any specific questions, you've got my email address at the um, bottom of the screen there. So and feel free to contact me uh, at any stage. And possibly the most important and last message uh, within this webinar is please have a Merry Christmas, have a safe Christmas and a, uh, a happy time with all your families. Thank you very much for your time. I appreciate it. Have That's a right, day. Oscar. You, you are actually the official end to our webinars for 2019. So thank okay. you for finishing us up in style and thanks for being part of uh, a number of them this year. No problem, Dwayne. Thanks for the opportunity. Um, as, as I mentioned earlier, uh, this is a lead up to the uh, Toyota Kata Summit, KataCon 6, uh, which takes place in Austin, Texas. And that will be in February 20th and 21st. You can learn more about that event as well as the TWI Summit, which takes place that same week. You can learn more about both those events by visiting leanfrontiers.com slash skills week and oscar i would be remiss if i didn't mention that you actually have a conference uh, that you're part of helping to organize in australia so for those of us who are listening to this maybe on your side of the planet um i think you have something coming up in is it april yeah april the 22nd to the 24th so anyone who's interested uh email me and i can send them a link to that event yeah great